Sing the symphony My heart beats when it could not sing a P One G play some keys to sing for me I get hooked to the chorus guaranteed uh, I'm a tempo tempo Music takes you to the place it came from Instrumentals in your mental echoes In your subconscious it sits and set those Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Welcome to Bible Talks. Fridays are for Bible Talks. Uh, don't be caught off guard by the fact that we are in a different location today. Uh, as you heard from the announcement earlier, we have changed the studio that we're doing Bible Talks in. The idea behind uh, the studio where we are doing, where we do the Monday show from, is that the studio is meant for a late night show. Uh, the political segment of the show, which we hope to eventually extend to other days as we uh, build and grow the show. Friday show, however, which is Bible Talks, uh, was always meant to come to this studio, but this studio was still uh, under construction. We have finally set this studio up and we are ready to give to you Bible Talks as it should be. Um, on the other side of the room, I have the guests' uh, seats and eventually we're going to build it in order to accommodate for a live audience as we go on uh, in the future. But we are, we are glad to have you. It's such a privilege always to be able to come and share uh, the word of God with you. It's, it's, such, it's such an honor, such a privilege. You have no idea for me to be here to share the word of God with you. I believe in these last days, we must begin to gather up every resource we can to do God's work, it's important to do God's work, invest in the world to come. Um, Bible Talks will not change in terms of the whole essence of the show. Uh, there'll be much improvement. The way the, the, the messages will be delivered to you will be different. Uh, we want to give you more clarity, more understanding. We want to make it a bit more serious. Um, the guests as well will come and give us great deliverances here. Yeah, so... Bible Talks uh, still airs Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. So we're glad to have you here. We just concluded a series on the gifts of the Spirit this past uh, couple of weeks. Gifts of the Spirit series was interesting. For me, it was uh, quite educative. I also learned, even though I presented majority of the gifts to you, I also did a lot of learning. Uh, we had a couple of guests that came over. Um, Prophet Gomezio, uh, Apostle Fred, we had um, Reverend Walter Mwambazi came in the middle of the of the of the 
of the series, even though he was not um, there, he was not here to discuss uh, the particular series we were discussing, which was the gifts of the spirit. So the gifts of the spirit series is still available under the Bible talk segment of the show, uh, all nine gifts we tackled. And today we are beginning a new series. I had a scripture open here that I wanted to read to you. Uh, We're beginning a new series, which is the personality of God. Now, you may agree with me that uh, many people who are calling themselves Christians today have many motivations for their Christianity. For some of them, it's due to the benefits that they can get from God. For some of them, it's a protection they have from witches and demons. Uh, For some of them, it's because of the academics. For some of them, it's because of their relationship. Um, They are not as many, I would not say the majority of the people calling themselves Christians are Christians because they have a curiosity about God. They want to understand who this uh, personality, this individual we know as God is. Who exactly is God? Where did God come from? Where does God stay? How come God just popped up and we we have no idea where he came from? Um, this is the same thing that I ask people about dreams, how that when you are in your dream, you never really, oh, well, some people do, but very few people actually inspect themselves in the dream to Understand, where did I come from? How did I find myself here? You may have gone to sleep in Zimbabwe and in your dream you find yourself in South Africa. So you begin to question yourself, how did I find myself in South Africa? Did I take a plane here? Um, Not too many people go through that process of questioning during dreams, right? And in the same way, uh, we are born into this world. We found people here. We found things here. We found systems here. How then are we not curious about where we came from, why we are here? All these questions should matter. And then when you later go on to hear about God who has created all these things that you found and that you will leave when you die, then you must be curious about this person, this God, because according to the Bible, we are told that he made us in his image according to his likeness. So before we go into this subject of the personality of God, I want to first uh, read you a prayer that I always read from the book of Ephesians just before I take my study of the Bible. Every time I want to study the Bible, I take a moment to say this prayer. Get on my knees, say this prayer, and I'm going to say it uh, on your behalf. Uh, I would encourage you to take up this, this practice and you will see just how you see the technology of the spirit is real. Uh, We serve an intelligent God. Ephesians chapter one, I'll read from, from verse 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand, in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. This is a very important prayer for you to to pray before you read the scriptures because it tells us that it's a prayer that is requesting for God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You see, it's important to understand that when you're studying the scriptures, the scriptures are a mystery. The gospel is a mystery that God hid in time past uh, from all creation, even the principalities of this, of, of, I almost say it of this world, even the principalities do not understand 
this message of the gospel. The Bible says, great is the mystery. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels. So we must acknowledge that, number one, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. We must also acknowledge that, number two, God was manifested in the flesh and justified in the spirit. And number three, he was seen of angels. So they are angels that only saw God when he was manifested in the flesh, which is a very important uh, key in understanding the mystery of the gospel, that the gospel has not been something that has been revealed from time past. It has been revealed through the church and to the church. So we have instances where angels, I mean, I, I'm ministering to you here uh, along with my team, which I am so grateful for, by the way, and setting this whole place up. Thank you, guys. Uh, my team here, as well as my, my team may be here listening to me, but we have angels here listening because angels uh, come here on earth to learn from us because this has been revealed to us and not to them. So the mystery of the gospel requires for one to have the spirit of revelation. Revelation itself, however, requires for one to have wisdom to know how to rightly apply it. So I like what the scripture says. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. So as you increase in knowledge, that knowledge begins to increase the more you receive revelation from the spirit of revelation. And you learn how to apply and divide that truth by the spirit of wisdom. So it's important for you to always make this prayer before you engage in the study of the word. The study of the word is not complicated as long as you have the assistance of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. And then what then happens? The eyes of your understanding are enlightened. And when your eyes, the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, you begin to know. You begin to know. Personality of God. So in understanding this uh, individual that we refer to as God, who has so richly revealed himself in the scriptures, uh, yet in mystery form that needs to be revealed in the form of revelation. Uh, yeah, so we know that, that God has revealed himself. Let's, let's begin by, by reading one scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. I'm reading it to you from the New King James Version. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Ah, this is a powerful scripture. It says, one God from whom are all things, right? One God from whom are all things. So we today are looking at God as the source. God is the source. God is where everything came from. So part one is, is, focusing, is focusing on God as the source. God is the location from where all things came. Anything you can think about, in your life, in the life of your neighbor, in the life of your loved ones, everything that when you entered into the world you found already existing, it all came from God. Now, when we talk about everything coming from God, are we talking about God having lived in a world where what we have existing exists and he was making use of them and then he decided to upgrade his world and give us the less one? Well, not, not exactly in that context. When we talk about things coming from God, we're talking about things coming from inside of God. So the material that was used to make this microphone, the material that was used to make me, the material that was used to make my clothing, the material that was made, used to make this cup, it all came from inside. It existed within God. It was a component of who God is once. And God decided to detach it from his, himself and share it with a realm that can be seen because God himself dwells in a realm that is not seen. So that the things 
which are visible should be made by those things which cannot be seen. So all things came from God. The scripture here says, unto us there is one God, the Father in heaven. Interestingly, it refers to him as the Father. Why does the Bible refer to God? Not just as our Father, but their Father. For starters, we know that fathers are the source of their children. Children come from their father's bodies. I like how God said to Abraham, you shall have a son from your body. So we know that fathers are the producers, the ones from whom children come. And so then if God is the father, then we know that everything came out from God. God is the source. Now, I want to make this easier for you to understand. One thing that was important for me to learn in order to understand just how things came out from God, including myself, was to first begin to understand that God himself is, is big. He is large. He's huge. The Bible says the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. So God being huge is dimensional. You know how we talk about men being three-dimensional beings, uh, being a able to perceive sight, breadth, uh, uh, sorry, being able to perceive length, breadth, and, and, and height, right? So if men are able to perceive length, breadth, and height, the only reason I know how tall this microphone is is because I can perceive height. The only reason I know the length of my hand is because I can perceive length and breadth. Uh, works in the same way. Now, this means that it is not necessarily we that are three-dimensional, but it is the world we are living in that is three-dimensional. At least we have designed it that way because that's all we can perceive. So we who perceive a three-dimensional world are not the three dimensions. The three dimensions exist inside the world that we live in. But when it comes to God, God is dimensional. It means in the same way that you would say our world is dimensional because we have built it in three dimensions, then God himself is a world and he has dimensions. But spiritual dimensions are not the same as physical dimensions. So the dimensions of God then are the dimensions from which or the dimensions through which you can perceive God, the dimensions through which creation finds its way out of God. And I'll mention three dimensions to you. The, the first being the dimension of God's deeds, the di dimension of God's deeds, what God then goes ahead to do, what God himself does. For example, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. This was not a delegated task. This was not something that God did using his words or using his thought. The Bible says he formed. To form is to use your hands. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. You're wondering if God has ever touched you? Yes, when you were in Adam, he touched you. You have seen God. You just don't remember it. That's why the Bible says when we see him, we shall know even as we are known. <laughs> so the first dimension is God's deeds, what God does. The second dimension is God's words, what God says. This dimension of God, the word of God is so powerful because this dimension of God is God himself. The dimension called the word is a personality, an individual, God himself, an aspect of him. Then the third dimension would be God's thoughts, what God thinks. He says to Jeremiah, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts not of destruction, 
but to give you an expected end. So God has thoughts. God even went as far as saying to Jeremiah himself, before I, I, I formed you, I knew you. And I called you to be a prophet. The book of Psalms tells us how God knew us and numbered our days even before we were born. So God's thoughts is a dimension. Now the way it works is that something will begin in the dimension of God's thoughts. So when God is seated and he is thinking and you then enter into God's thoughts, what you will discover is that you are going to meet every single individual that has lived in heaven, on earth, and in all the heavens. You're going to meet them, you will interact with them, you will greet them, you will have a chat because you have entered into the dimension of God's thoughts. What I'm trying to tell you is that when God begins to think, his visions create, they actually produce what he's thinking. So God sits, he can be there for millions of years. He's creating earth in the world of his mind to the extent that when he finally speaks the earth out, these are individuals that he has had close, intimate interaction with. He understands all the 120 billion people that will eventually live on the earth. He understands. He knows them individually. He has spent time interacting with them in his mind to the extent that when he, the father of spirits, then breathes and speaks them out, he knows who exactly they are. He knows exactly who they are. So when all things came out from God, we are talking about preconceived ideas being transported into a realm that can be seen by the word of God. Let's read that scripture again. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. Do you see that? Jesus Christ, through whom are all things. Now the Bible does tell us that Jesus Christ is the word of God. And the Bible also does tell us that God created through. Do you begin to, are you beginning to see, to understand? Let me read you another scripture from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 2. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in past, in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Now I always tell you, uh, I've always been telling you in Bible talks that there are worlds, that God did not just make one world when he made our world, but God has made worlds. And in our next uh, part of this series, The Personality of God, I'll explain to you how God is strong. And because God is strong, I'll tell you exactly what that statement means. And uh, in relation to, to the many worlds. Now, the Bible here says God in time past spoke to us by the prophets he spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he created the worlds. Now the Bible tells us that unto us there is one God from whom all things came, and one Lord Jesus through whom they came. Now the book of Hebrews later clarifies that God created the worlds through Christ Jesus, his son. Now we also know that Jesus Christ was not always the son of God. If you have been a believer for a while, this must be knowledge that is not strange to you, that Jesus Christ became the Son of God. Before he was the Son of God, we know that Jesus Christ was 
the manifestation of the word of God. Jesus was the word of God himself. Now, we know that God created the worlds, but through his word. So I told you there are dimensions in God. The first dimension being his thoughts. The dimension of God's thoughts is the production house where the idea, where the entire world is first produced before it's brought into a realm that can be seen by the word of God. So the transportation that God uses to take from his thoughts into a realm that can be seen is his speech, light, be, let there be trees, let there be people, let there be this and that, right? <laughs> wow, there are also aspects of God's creation that he does not speak out of his thoughts. He also then goes to create them by his hands, which is a dimension of God called his deeds. Now, I can explain to you the difference between those things that God speaks out and those things that God then produces with his hands. What di dis distinguishes them in terms of quality? What really is the difference? Let me read you a scripture uh, in, in, in closing. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. I love the book of Hebrews. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them much respect. And we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and leave? Do you see that? The Father of what? The Father of spirits. I explained to you in one of my previous Bible talks, I believe must be discerning of spirits. I told you how you can distinguish between spirits and not just human spirits, not just demonic spirits, not just angelic spirits. But I explained to you how that things have spirits. What we may describe as inanimate objects are then things that are living to God. I like the words of Jesus. He said, for all are living unto him. What we describe as dead or inanimate to God is living because there's a spirit. So the spirit is the life, the source of the thing. When you see the thing die, then the spirit has departed. Whatever it is, if it's a tree, it's a dog, it's a horse, it's a cat, it's a person, it's a hand, a leg when they amputate it. When it eventually dies, what it has become devoid of is its spirit. When the Bible refers to God as the father of spirits, the Bible is telling us that God is the source. He's the source of the actual life of everything we can see. God is the source of the life of everything we can see, every tree. The earth itself has a spirit that it shares with everything else. Have you noticed how God, the difference between animals and human beings is that God spoke the animals out of the earth. Yet when it came to man, he formed him. Now you can distinguish the quality here because the spirit of the thing that he spoke came from the earth because he spoke to the earth, bring forth every beast, after its kind. And when the earth produced these beasts, it gave them a spirit. But when God then formed from his own hands, he gave what he formed, a spirit. So the spirit that is in what God forms with his hands is that spirit that comes from God. While the spirit of those things that God then goes on to speak out is the spirit of the thing that is producing what God has spoken out. Because God has already created the raw materials and everything else except those things he forms from his hands, come out of the raw materials. God is the source. All things came from God. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this, this Bible talk segment, the personality of God. It's important to keep our curiosity about God alive and to continue to learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and understand more about God. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share.
Trust me, Bible Talks is the place you want to be every Friday, 20 hours Central African time. You're going to learn so, 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 so much here. I'm so blessed to have been here to share this with you. God bless. Thank you. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.